Hello everyone and welcome to my new video. In this video, I'm going to talk about byte pair encoding in natural language processing. So why is byte pair encoding important and um, how it works? We are going to take a look at that. It's not very difficult to understand and uh, there won't be a lot of coding involved today. I'm just going to talk about and show you how this whole algorithm works. You can see the Wikipedia page open in my background. It's because it's one of the best resources available to understand byte pair encoding. It's, it's, uh, they have a very short example that you should go through. We will go through that. But first, let's look at what we have done till now. So uh, let me open my Blackboard and here you can see like uh, what what we have done to, uh, what we have done till now is uh, we had uh, I went fishing so like we we had a sentence and we split it into um, tokens right we split it into tokens and it was based only on certain rules like based on space or if you find a, a first trough then split there these kind of things so uh, byte pair encoding is or bpe as people call it is a sub word tokenization algorithm and it's very useful now why is it useful and why do we need it let's let's look at that let's say you have three words in the corpus my favorite example fish fishing and fishes this is your corpus so your data set and you have these three words there now you come across a new word fished so what will you do now so there are many different options some of the options that we have seen is you can use stemming you can use lemmatization and if you use these techniques you have to use them uh, in the training data also so when you're processing the training data you have to use them so you will never come across these uh, three different variations because they will all reduce to fish but stemming and limitization don't always work so let's take a look at a german word called kulschrank and this means refrigerator now a lot of people in many different countries have uh, uh, different different languages and they like to combine words together like countries like Scandinavian countries or uh, German speaking countries they like to combine words together to form a new word and this word may or may not be available in the dictionary it usually is but it might it, it is possible that it it maybe it's not available in the dictionary so what what are you going to do in those cases how are you going to handle a word like cool trunk when you get it in the test data so let's say your corpus has the words cool let's say and shrunk so this means cool i think so and this means box but anyways so um, let's say your corpus has these words now uh, you see okay uh, the the new word that i'm getting is made up of two different words which are available in the corpus and that's how you split this to two different words and if you use this method you will be able to handle a word like cool trunk which is a completely unknown word to your model but if you don't use this this kind of trick to split it you won't be able to use it so uh, your your sentence will be something 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 cool shrunk and the cool shrunk will become unknown so it will be missing some uh, information and probably that's the information you don't want to miss uh, people can also like add an ending to this word uh, let's say they added en to the end so now it's made up of three different words 
or let's say uh, three parts this word has three parts and uh, if you apply a stemming algorithm maybe you can get it uh, down to cool shrunk again but the if, if you use a technique like subwords like what I've shown you here is a subword tokenization technique for unknown words you can split them you can split any kind of word into small small parts and then you can use those parts for training your model or making predictions from your model so you can split by the largest word you can split by high likelihood and that's why we are going to take a look at this algorithm called byte pair encoding today so byte pair encoding is it's very simple very easy so let's go back to our yeah wikipedia page and take a look here so what it says okay byte pair encoding it is it's a very old algorithm so it was uh, it was used as a data compression technique so what hap what's happening here is you see let's say you have a sequence of data a a a b b something something so what you do is you take uh, the most commonly occurring pairs together so a a has been seen once twice thrice what is the number of times so a a has been seen most often so what we do is we replace a a by a capital z and we keep on repeating this process we see like okay the next um pair of words pair of letters that appear characters that appears together is a b so we replace them with a character big big letter y and we keep on repeating this process as long as we want or uh, depending on how many um, characters we want in our vocabulary so the best to understand this is to just go through the paper neural machine translation of rare words with subword units in which it was a uh, byte pair encoding for uh, tokenization was introduced and if you scroll down a little bit you will find like they have given you the whole algorithm in the form of python code so what you can do is just copy paste this and run it and then print everything line by line to understand what's going on but i made it a bit simpler and easier for you uh, so we are going to take a look at um, what I've created here. So let's say you start from a, in byte pair encoding, you start from a corpus. In any kind of NLP problem, you start from a corpus. Corpus is nothing but a data set of text. So uh, let's say your corpus has many different words. And in this corpus, we have four words low lower newest and widest we don't have anything else we just let's say we have four words and low has been seen five times lower has been seen two times newest has been seen six times and widest has been seen three times so this is what we have and now what we do is we have a special character so this slash w this is called end of word character so we add this character at the end of each and every word to our corpus and you you will also notice that there is a space in between each characters because uh, in byte pair algorithm byte pair encoding algorithm what you have to do is you have to do some kind of cleanup first so you have to come up with some kind of characters that uh, you will initialize the algorithm from so we are initializing them from different characters l o w e r and w like like these and uh, so everything is separated every character uh, every two characters have a space in between them so low is seen five times lower is seen two times new is seen six times and wide is seen three times so what is our initial vocabulary so now this is very important so if you start with the byte pair encoding algorithm you have to create your initial vocabulary first and you have to do some kind of pre-tokenization 
so you can use any some kind of regex and remove some uh, things that you don't want and uh, convert uh, normalize the uh, sentence uh, sentences so you have to do these kind of things so uh, you start from a vocab so now in this vocab it it's, it's all the characters that you see on the left side so we start from this vocab so now what what we do next is we start finding all pairs and the number of times they appear so let's say we look at this pair o and w and it's seen seven times why seven times because in the first sentence it's seen five times not in the first in the, in the, f the first word appear low appears five times and lower appears two times so the combination o and w together it is seen seven times and you continue then r and end of word it's seen together two times then wi is seen three times es is seen in uh, two different words many times nine times and tw or uh, t and end of word are seen nine times so now we see like we got the top uh, matches sorry uh, top combinations uh, given their count so es is seen nine times and t and end of word is seen nine times so just choose one and uh, keep it aside so if you keep it aside what do you do you include it in the vocabulary so you have included es together in the vocabulary and um, here which this is your initial corpus it has changed a bit now so now e and s are not seen um, so now e s and uh, e and s are not seen separately they are seen together so you combine them you combine them together now the next combination now uh, the, the view, view always combine two characters so now e and s here has become one one character let's assume so now you combine uh, you you can come you can take w e r you can take e r end of uh, word so you have to find all combinations and you have to get the one with the highest occurrence so now the highest occurrence is of est so we add est to the vocab we move on and we see like even est gets combined with slash w uh, it has the highest occurrence so that's our next word in the vocabulary then we see lo seven times we add lo and then low lo, we add low and this is how we move on so how many iterations we do it's totally up to you so one iteration will produce one combination and your vocab size will increase by one so it's totally up to you how many uh, iterations you want to do actually it's a hyper, hyper parameter so you keep moving on and you keep on appending to the vocabulary and you your corpus you can see like in every iteration in, in your corpus so if you if you if you add something here your corpus changes so this one newest becomes one word now one uh, one character it, it has to be assumed that this is one character so now we have added a lot of words now what we are going to do is we are going to look at what merges are merges are nothing it's just what you merged you merged e and s to es est to est est and slash w to est slash w so, so th these are the merge operations that you have performed while um, after reaching a certain uh, point in time where, where you have like let's say 5000 or 6000 or 10000 iterations so now you're presented with a new word and if we if we look at our uh, example we had low lower newest and widest so let's say now you, your word is lowest it's not seen in the vocab now if you use a traditional algorithm for tokenization and you will look at this word and you you will say okay i don't know this word so i'm probably going to ignore it it's an unknown word for me but it's not 
if you add this end of character, so you have to add this end of character to it, and then you have to go through the merges and see what are the largest possible merges possible for this given set of characters. So then automatically you split into EST and slash W and LO plus W, which is low. So now you split this whole token lowest to two different tokens. Similarly, let's say you have a word powest. <laughs> I don't know if this is a word, but in this case, um, after looking at the merges and the vocab, I have O separately, I have W separately, I have a combination of EST slash W, and that's the largest possible combination I have. I don't have P in the vocab, which is so, it gets represented as an unknown character, U and K. So, this is basically what byte pair encoding is. Uh, when, when you're doing this part, there are a lot of optimizations possible. I will leave it up to you to decide how you want to do that, but that's not very difficult. And now we are going to take a look at, uh, uh, yeah, one more thing. So this is what, what we saw just now is character level byte pair encoding. So byte pair encoding is your uh, name of the algorithm. Don't get confused with the bytes uh, and here you're looking at one single character. Now, uh, this this has a problem because uh, an algorithm like this uh, will not perform very well when it comes to languages like Chinese or Japanese. So what we do in those cases is we modify this algorithm a little bit. And we modify this algorithm a little bit and you can read a little bit about this in this paper, Neural Machine Translation with the byte levels of words in which they experiment with um, byte level, uh, in which they convert the characters to UTF-8 encoding. So uh, I represent the characters with bytes. So if you do that, you will probably won't, you won't have uh, like a problem dealing with uh, different other languages. So uh, this is this is one one of the, um, the like this is a tokenization technique being used in the model GPT two, um, and uh, you you can go through this paper, but this is the only difference. So instead of characters, if you represent them by UTF eight bytes, that's it you then uh, your algorithm remains the same you keep combining them together until unless you reach a certain point where you don't want to combine so uh i think that's that's basically it about uh, byte pair encoding one more thing that i wanted to uh talk about was uh let let me see so here you see like uh what 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 would you do here is uh, we have counts so we combine based on the counts so we say okay uh, if these two characters have appeared most number of times they will be combined so if instead of counts you used some kind of uh, estimate some kind of probability to find what is the probability that a combination of O, W appears uh, in this corpus more than the combination E, R appears. So if you use something like this, then you change this algorithm to something else called word piece tokenization, which is BERT. So, uh, which is uh, used by BERT model. So you can go read about it and I'm not going into details there, but the algorithm remains the same. It's just uh, small changes. So today we learned byte pair encoding, character level byte pair encoding, byte level byte pair encoding, and word piece tokenization. And I hope you liked the video. And uh, if you have any comments, let me know in the comment section. And uh, um, see you in the next video. Bye.